Hi, this is Derek Murphy of Creativity.com. My camera's going to shake for just a minute because it's on a weird stand. Um, I'm going to try to address an issue that keeps coming up. It's come up in the last five or so years um, that I've been running this online business where I focus mostly on publishing. Um, and that's the issue of writing to market. And because a lot of people think that real literature, real art, um, needs to be done in a vacuum without considering the end user. So they're really focused on their own pr creative production and creating the best possible work that they can that they can create um, and completely divorced from who's actually going to read it and who's going to enjoy it. They hope that somebody will like it, they hope that they're making great work, however their end game is not about the money, it's about the art. So they say things like, um, <clears throat> well generally they say things like, um, I didn't write it to make money so I'm just, I'm happy if anybody reads it. Um, the problem is after they publish it, they try to sell it. They try and they try and they spend a lot of money in marketing um, to get people to read their book and then they get frustrated because they see things like, well, you know, um, so-and-so has 20 vampire romance novels that must be terrible but they make millions of dollars on Amazon and they say, I don't want to be that kind of author who makes that kind of shit um, that pleases the lowest common denominator. I want to be, you know, a great literary genius. Um, the problem with that view um, besides being pretentious, is just that when you're developing anything and you want to make money from it, it always comes down to how much value are you giving to other people and how much they're willing to pay for it. So if you've written something that you think is really good, but nobody else buys it, you haven't done the right job of explaining to them or convincing them of how much value you're offering. Um, if you've done a super job of convincing them that your book is something that they need to read, then they'll pay for it and you won't have any problem with marketing. Um, you can be an amazing marketer and get people to read your book, but if they don't like your book or they're not satisfied by it, then they'll leave negative reviews and you still won't make very much money. So there's, it's a gamble, it's always a risk. If you're trying to write um, books for passion, even if you really, really believe in the book, um, that doesn't mean it's gonna make money. And I see a lot of people say th things like, um, if you write for money, if you chase the money, if you write to market, then you are selling out and you'll never actually be successful because you're just writing shit. People believe that if you're writing to market, um, it's less creative. Uh, they believe that it's less good quality. It'll be of lesser quality and also that it'll be less enjoyable. And the last one's really important because a lot of authors will say, sure, I could write to market, but I don't want to because if I wrote to market, I would just be working, that would be a job, and I could just, you know, I might as well work at a gas station or something, so what's the difference? Um, those, I think, are three fallacies that um, authors use to excuse the fact that they're not making any money with their writing, because they think, okay, sure, I could sell out and write to market, um, but I choose not to, and so maybe I won't make as much money, but at least I'm, in, I'm enjoying it or something. That's something they say usually for several years, um, until they get really frustrated and they're like, okay, shit, I've been doing this for five years, I have 20 books out, and I'm still not making any money, um, and now they've put in, I don't know how many hours, I want to say like, I don't know, people say it takes about 10,000 hours to learn a skill, people say it takes a million words to learn how to write, so that means you're writing about 10 or 15 novels before you're good enough at writing to really be a professional. Um, you can make money on your first book, but it's the amount of money that you make on books is always directly proportional to the amount of readership who's willing to spend money on that type of book. So it's not even necessarily about the quality of the book that you're writing, um, it's about the genre and the topic. So if, I'm, if I decide to write, for example, I've written a mermaid book, um, that does pretty well, but it doesn't sell nearly as well as my Fallen Angel books, or I'm going to start writing vampire books because the, the market is so much bigger um, for certain genres and that will have a massive effect on your on your bottom line. So if you're not considering the readership, how many readers are interested in that type of book, um, that's a huge consideration in your potential earnings. Um, if you're going to think about doing this as a business, you need to know how many people might be interested in buying your book. Then you need to know how much competition there is um, and how your book can get ahead of all that competition. But that's a different thing. Um, the danger, I think, is that there are a lot of people, well, not the danger, the thing that pisses me off um, is that there are people like me who are writing books. Um, I have a PhD in literature, I'm not the best writer in the world, but I'm working hard at it. I believe in my art, I'm trying to get better. Um, I see people who 
consider me a hack because I'm writing for market, which only means I'm trying to produce the best quality fiction I possibly can um, to satisfy a great number of readers in a particular genre. I do it intentionally, I do it on purpose, I know that genre, I know what they want and what they expect, um, and I try to provide a better reader experience. I do that because um, I care about my fans, I want a good reputation as a writer, uh, and I want to make money. I'm, I'm intentionally looking for the money, and the reason I look for the money is because if I can't get people to pay me for my fiction, I'm doing something wrong. Um, <clears throat> because people like reading fiction, people want to pay for good quality fiction. They're, they're happy to spend money um, on a new story because it's entertainment. It's just like going to, to see a movie or something. They, they want to spend some time with the story that they enjoy. So you should get paid for providing them with that kind of a reading experience. And it should be a job. It's fine. If you're spending that much time on it, um, you should get reimbursed. You should get paid. That's an intentional decision and it's so much easier to do it successfully if you um, if you go into it focusing on the money. And that doesn't mean you're selling out, doesn't mean you're giving the readers exactly what you think that they want. Um, of course it's going to be creative, it's going to be your own voice. There's this assumption that authors who believe in passion or passionate writing, they look at market uh, writing to market and they say things like, well they assume it's it's shitty writing or it just can't be any good. Um, sometimes they denigrate it by saying, um, the readership is stupid, basically. They say, you know, I want to write a book just like that, but I want to write a much better book because if those readers liked that shitty book, then they're going to love my book, which is better quality. Um, that's really putting down the readers that you're hoping to entertain. And if you don't have respect for your, the readers of that genre, you shouldn't be writing that genre anyway. And you shouldn't be assuming that they're going to like a better written book, um, which is also a another huge fallacy, just that the writing quality matters. Um, and I say that because readers read for story, they read for entertainment. In different genres, writing quality matters more. In literary fiction, writing quality matters sometimes more than story. Um, but generally, writing quality doesn't matter as much as story. So if you have a greatly written book, but you didn't write to market, or you didn't... Uh, I'm going to make a connection that, that may not be true, that you may not like, but I generally think yeah, it's not true, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, there's a difference between plotters and pantsers, and generally, pantsers don't plot out their books as well, but they can still have amazing books. Usually they're full of action. Um, they can still be very entertaining. For lots of genres, pantsing works very well. So I'm not saying uh, don't do it. The problem is if you don't deliberately write to market, you're not going to consider the formulaic... Um, story organization that most books in that genre write. So you're going to say, I'm going to write a young adult romance, but I want it to be completely different and new and novel, um, so I'm not going to follow any formulas, I'm not going to see what else bestsellers in that genre are doing, I'm not going to see what readers of that genre actually like and responding to, I'm just going to do it my own way and, and make something new. Um, that usually doesn't work because readers aren't looking for a completely new experience. They're looking for something very similar to other books that they've liked. They read gen genres for certain reasons because they all give a certain kind of reading experience that satisfies them. If you don't know what that reading experience is, um, you can't hope to convince that that um, readership to buy your book. Or if they buy it, then they won't like it because it's not what they expected or it's not what they um, are used to seeing from other books. So if you're not writing for market, you're going to have a much harder time satisfying the readers that you think you're trying to satisfy. Um, and that's bad because you won't make as much money, the readers won't like the book uh, as much. Of course there are exceptions, you may have a smash bestseller. Generally if you're writing to get an agent for traditional publishing, you want your book to be a little bit unique, um, but popular genre books will still have very clear um, rules and rules and formulas and templates, they're, they're things that happen. Like I write young adult and it's all very similar. Even across different genres in young adult, there are things that happen in almost all of the best-selling young adult stories. And I know that so I can make sure to put those in my books and satisfy readers. And I'm doing that intentionally because I want to satisfy readers, which for me is the same as making money with my books. If I can satisfy readers, even if I'm giving my book away for free, I know that I can make money with that book because if they read it and they enjoy it, um, I have a product that I can sell. 
And I know that because I've built a product to sell. Um, people will think that's sketchy or selling out or they'll think I'm just hacking um, writing somehow or that it's not as highbrow or elevated or high quality or whatever. A lot of people I think assume because my books are doing well that I must not be a good writer and I'm only successful because I'm, I'm using these guerrilla marketing techniques that I talk a lot about to promote my books. So I think that's um, disrespectful towards me for people who haven't read my books but just make these assumptions. But also I think it's really, what's the word? Um, it's disadvantageous to authors who believe things like that because they are going to continue writing books that they feel are higher quality books. They think they're doing it right. They think that they're following their passion and doing what they believe in, but they're gonna have a much harder time of selling books and making money, which is too bad because I think if you wanna be a writer, you should focus on making an income with your writing so that you can spend more time writing. I'm lucky in that I don't have a real job. I don't need to get up in the morning and, and, and uh, get a paycheck. So I can focus on writing most of the time. I just finished this book like I spent 12 hours a day the last week or so finishing this novel. I can do that because um, that is my job. That's kind of what I do. So the more books I put out, the more money I can make as long as I'm writing books that satisfy readers. So I think there's a, there's a term, I think a lot of writers don't like the term right to market. Uh, they don't like the term. There's a weird disconnect between making the money and writing the, the book, the art. And so a lot of people write the book intentionally ignoring the money or the market or the readership and then try to market the book. And after you've written a book, um, there should be an opposite of right to market, like not right to market right to passion or something, I don't know, but after you've written a book to passion and then try to connect it with a market, that's way too late because even if you're, even if you do everything right, even if you market really hard, it all comes down to the book you've written and how well it satisfies readers. So writing to market is a way to make a book that satisfies readers, um, which has the result of probably being much easier to sell and, and market without uh, doing any work. That's why people do it, especially what I found is that Generally, authors put out a passion project first, get really frustrated, and five years later, after they've written like a million words and are not seeing any success, then finally they're ready to say, okay, I have this skill, but I'm not making any money. Maybe I'll try to intentionally make some money by writing things that readers actually want to read. When you get to that level, suddenly it's very easy to make a living with your writing. And it's frustrating for me that um, I can't convince most artists or authors to get to this level because it's something they kind of they resist as long as possible and then they feel like they're selling out or giving up when they finally write to market they feel like you know they hate it or they're, they're giving up their dreams it's only a question of shifting your belief system so if you have a belief system that is limiting your writing income that's not a good belief system for you to have. If it's not making you more productive, if it's not making you finish more books that, that make any money, um, I don't believe that having the passion belief system or the right to market belief system, I don't believe either one of those necessarily produces better quality work. I see people who believe in a passion system and they're still writing, I wanna say really trashy um, adult erotica books or something and I've, I checked through them the writing is crappy everything is is low quality but they still think that because they're not writing to market they are following their passion and they're they're writing better quality works um, so it's it's a it's an ideology shift I don't think either one is true but one is definitely much more uh, results oriented if you do write to market you'll see results. It'll be easier for you to finish more books more quickly because you'll know what to put in them, you'll know how to structure them and how to organize them. You won't be floundering around. A lot of people feel like you have to be floundering around and unsure of where you're going because it's only art if you didn't plan it. So it's only art if it's a surprise, if it comes out of nowhere, if you're inspired by the muse or whatever. That's, that's art. So a lot of authors feel like if they don't have that, then they're not really artists or they're not really creating genius quality work because um, Traditionally, you know, a lot of writers say 
things like that, things about how they didn't see where it was going or that it all came together. That's a fun self-exploration um, process if you want to write a book that way. It could result in a book that people like and makes money, that's totally possible, but it's so much more likely to finish a book that's going to make money if you do it deliberately to provide value and to entertain um, and satisfy readers. I focus on, like I say, I focus on the money. I focus on satisfying readers. I don't focus on, I think people assume if I say I focus on money then people think I'm ripping readers off or I'm um, manipulating readers or I'm fooling them with my tricky marketing tactics and that's bullshit. I make money because I satisfy a lot of readers and they're willing to pay for my books and I'm able to do that because um, I studied literature for 10 years and I work really hard at knowing what's expected of the genre. So I make sure I do something that's better than, but still conforms to all the rules of a particular genre. So this video is getting kind of long. It's not something that's easily resolved uh, because, like I said, if you believe something, I can't change your beliefs. But I do expect after you're very frustrated, eventually you may feel like, generally you're, you're either gonna get to this point where you feel like completely giving up because nothing works and then you go on Facebook and you say, I'm going to give up writing because nobody's buying my books even though I'm doing everything right. Um, I see that a lot. People who say they're doing everything right, they never are. Even if I take a look at their Facebook page, I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video. Um, I don't think so. There was someone on Facebook, I think I started talking about it and I changed the subject, but there was someone who wanted to hire someone to market their books for them. And I said, I took a look at his Amazon page, and I said, and he was already making money, he was making pretty good money. But his Amazon page didn't have any keywords in the description for any genres, no authors, no nothing. So anybody searching on Amazon for anything wouldn't find his books because he wasn't using any keywords. That's a really easy fix. So I told him, I can rewrite your blurbs on your Amazon page and double your sales because all I'll be doing is making it so that your book shows up in Amazon search results, that's not, a, that's not really a marketing hack. That's just um, putting your product in the right place so that people can find it. If you're not putting your product in the right place, like instead of putting it out on the shelf, it's still in the back storeroom where people are never gonna find it. Um, if you're not putting it on the shelf, that's gonna really hurt you. So you don't need to hire a marketer to do clever book promotion for you. You just need to put it on the shelf. That's an easy thing to do, but if you're not thinking about writing to market or putting your books out there, you're not thinking about it as a product, you're not going to see results you want. But my point was that a lot of people will give up and they'll say, I'm going to give up writing, it's not working. You don't need to give up. You have a skill set, but you do need to let go of your limiting um, beliefs about creativity because those are the things that are, that are harming you. If you feel like you cannot possibly write to market because you hate popular fiction or something like that, or you hate all the readers who, who read popular fiction, that's a choice you're making um, and you can decide to continue and endure and persevere in your personal choice that's directly responsible for the poor sales that you're experiencing, or you can let go of that belief system and discover a new belief system which allows you to make money with your writing. I don't think there's any difference in the quality of the books that you're writing. Uh, I don't think it's less enjoyable to write for market. I think it's just as easy and just as much fun for me to write a book I know is going to, actually I know it's, it's a lot more fun to write a book that I know is going to be successful because I know readers are hungry for it and they want it, um, they're reviewing it well. I know I don't need to worry about earning or marketing or selling it because it's gonna um, provide income for me. It's a lot easier for me to enjoy that writing experience. It's still hard but it's not a different writing experience than if I was just trying to write something for myself without knowing. Um, if anything, it's there's less anxiety and there's a lot uh, less procrastination because it's easier to finish a book if you know people are waiting for it and if you know people are going to like it. So a lot of the fear and the uncertainty and the anxiety that people associate with the creative um, headspace, like when you're creating something new, there's always that fear that nobody's going to like it. I don't think that's true. I think that's a, a result of the limiting belief about creating something you're passionate about without looking at the market. That fear, that anxiety, I don't experience those things. It's still really hard to write a book, but I don't have that 
insecurity about I don't have as much of that insecurity about whether people are going to like it. I know I may think, I don't know if they're going to like it as much as this other book that I wrote, which I know they like a lot more. Um, on the other hand, if I want less anxiety and more income, I can choose to write the books that I know more people are going to enjoy rather than focus on the books that aren't as popular. And that's something you can know with, with testing and experimentation. So I'll stop this video now. It's getting pretty long. Um, I just want to talk about this issue. You should subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I'm Derek Murphy, this is Creativity. I just uh, set up a new little... I'm focusing more on my, my video production in 2017, so I'll be doing a lot of videos and the quality should be better than previous videos, at least that's my hope. And so you're going to see a lot of content coming out from me this year. Thanks, bye-bye.